Αλλά αυτό εδώ ήταν στο επόμενο στενό και δεν ήξερε καν ότι ήταν εκεί. Όλη η οικογένεια ήταν εκεί να με υποδεχτεί. Ο Ρούντολφ, ο Μοχάμαντ, ο παππού, η Λόλα. Μαζί μου θα σα ασφαλίσει. Το καινούριο που το βάλατε. Έτοιμοι. Foundation, eyeliner, lipstick. Θα φέρει να με τα πάνω κάτω στην Αθήνα. Uh, well, Broadway is the story of um, a group of uh, dancers and thieves in Athens. And uh, they have a scheme. Um, some of them dance in the streets, in the shopping areas, to distract the pedestrians, the passers-by, the consumers who go in and out of the shops. And um, uh, the others, the other um, members of the, of the group, they mingle with a crowd to uh, steal their pickpockets and to uh, steal their phones and um, and the wallets while they're being distracted by the dancers. So, so that's the um, that's the scheme, and we follow the uh, lives and and the adventures of this group. And um, yeah, that's the main premise of the movie. Well, Broadway um, in the film, Broadway is uh, a place. Um, which in fact actually exists in Athens, but uh, it has been fictionalized uh, in the movie, uh, which is an abandoned entertainment complex. Um, so that, in the story, that is the refuge of this group, uh, of this gang. So that's where they live, that's where they, you know, they, they hide. Um, but at the same time, obviously, Broadway is a kind of an idea which is kind of beyond a, geographical, you know, um, uh, specification. I mean, it is, it is a place in New York, obviously, but Broadway is, has, you know, is something that exists in our fantasy, I think, more than, more than, uh, than it is a place. So Broadway means, you know, drama, disguise, performance, fun, secrets, lies, you know, it's, uh, it's, that's what Broadway is all about. So in that sense, Broadway can be anywhere, as long as you bring it with you. Well, I think that, uh, I mean, these places do exist and are kind of uh, our modern day monuments. But, you know, unlike the monuments of ancient Greece, let's say, these are monuments of the 20th century and, and uh, the monuments of a, of a consumerist, hyper-consumerist society. Um, and, you know, I feel that we, there, that we are in a kind of transitional moment in history where we don't know where we're going. I mean. This is something for the historians of the future. But now there are these places that 20 years ago they used to be like, you know, uh, filled with people and with energy and now they're just left in the middle of nowhere. So, so these do exist. And my um, exploration is how these empty abandoned spaces can be reused, rehabilitated, rehabituated by, um, by uh, people who don't have another refuge. Η μαμά ήταν μπαλαρίνα και ήταν ένα τέρας, έτσι κι εγώ. Τον λέγανε Μάρκο, είχε σχέδιο, σοφούσα για φασαρία. Θα πηγαίναμε στο Broadway να γνωρίσω την οικογένειά του. Well, I think uh, Elsa is a um, phenomenal actress, so... Um... Copa Loca was the, was the first film that we made together and uh, she was just out of drama school. Actually, that's where I met her. I, I went to the drama school where she was studying and I, I met a few um, young actors and, and I met her and then we made the short film together. And, um, you know, it's with some people, with some actors that you find a kind of connection that is difficult to put into words, but you see something in them in the way that they translate uh, through their performance, through their presence, you know, uh, what you've conceived, uh, which is kind of magic. So, uh, so there is this connection with, with Elsa in the films that we've done already and with other films that I'm sure that we will make together. Um, so on the first level, there is a kind of a very, you know, uh, organic um, connection. And then uh, she's also a person that really, you know, dives into the process and we rehearse a lot and she's completely available to the preparation. So we, we explored this character along with the other cast, the other members of the cast who are, you know, 
um, really great actors and performers. And together we um, uh, spent more than a year, year and a half, uh, really rehearsing, exploring the characters, trying things out before we shot. So it, it took a lot of time, quality time that we spent together to arrive at the, this result. Well, I mean, um, gender fluidity, I mean, it, you know, it really depends on the context of the story. I mean, there could have been another story yeah. um, dealing with these themes where this wouldn't have been, um, uh, there, would, there would be no anxiety involved in this process. I mean, the, the anxiety in the context of the story is that uh, this disguise, uh, this transition is happening as a disguise, not as a, as a natural inclination, you know, because uh, some people naturally want to move from one gender to the other. So, so but here it's, it's um, what, in, what interested me is to take somebody who is a cis male uh, and put him into the shoes of a woman not out, not because it was his natural inclination to go that way, but because he had to to hide. And by putting him in this position, he um, had to. Um, the result was that he he started perceiving uh, ideas about femininity in a in a in the first person. So uh, as he had to play this role. So um, so and. And as a result, he starts becoming more and more, more this role. So, so, so that's what all these ideas interested me. But, but in, in this kind of uh, context, which is that um, uh, you take somebody and you, know, you, you put them in a role that they never expected that they would have to perform. And, uh, um, and that you know, changes completely their perspective about the the other gender and it changes their perspective about themselves and about the the very vague borders between gender and representation uh, because we you know we've been we we grew up in a society where um, we were kind of told that genders are are you know strict uh, constructs that are almost well, not even constructs that genders are like uh, is a, is a thing that is uh, is n not um, uh, cannot shift and that it has very specific attributes and so by taking this um, case study um, you know I wanted to to explore the way that uh, this fluidity is really um, uh, really exists you know. Οι κλέφτε είναι ταχυδακτηλουργοί και η βασική μέθοδο του ταχυδακτηλουργού είναι ο αντιπερισπασμό. Πρόσεχε, τα γκόνι, άσχημα. Για να μπει, έπρεπε πάντα κάτι να δώσει και για να βγει, επίση. In terms of, of the story and what happens in the story, uh, I think that, first of all, if you have these characters inhabit a place called Broadway, uh, so you have these these thieves, these outcasts, living in this kind of um, uh, kind of like this bubble of a kind of decaying American dream, you know. So so this contra contrast is uh, is what what creates the mood of this world, which is uh, you know they coming from this gray zone in their lives, and they and they find refuge within a world of color, even, th even though this world is maybe a bubble, it's a, it's a, it's a very enclo encapsulated, you know, um, um, utopia. Um, so uh, this is what they want. I mean, they want to escape the, the grayness of their lives and they want to find a wonderland. Um, so uh, it couldn't have happened otherwise. I mean, this is the essence of the story. These, this kind of um, um, mixture of different moods, tones, colors. Uh, this is what you know, Broadway is about. So it couldn't have been a, w without these saturated colors. And yeah, I'd say more more consciously the films that I that I kind of. Um, 
connected this story in my head to our, you know, American films of the 50s and, and film noir and, and uh, so, and Hitchcock and, you know, I, I would say those, those, those are some, some more, not references, but some more, you know, uh, present influences in, in my mind. <laughs> Εδώ μέσα ο καθένας πρέπει να ξέρει τη θέση του. Θέλω να φύγουμε. Πάμε που θες. Γίνεται πόλεμος εκεί έξω. 